Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Futurum Tech Webcast. I'm your host, Daniel Newman, Principal Analyst, Founding Partner at Futurum Research. Excited for this special interview series edition where I have Durga Malati joining me to talk about breaking news, acquisition being made by Qualcomm. And we're going to talk more about that here on the show. But first, Durga, welcome back. Thanks. Thanks for having me, Dan. Hey, it's always great to bring you on and chat with you. Uh, Company's moving fast. Uh, every quarter, I'm looking at the the revenue numbers, and of course, 5G has been a driver. But there's been so much diversification, and since Cristiano Amon took the took the helm, and you as part of his leadership team, uh, you're starting to really see some of these investments, the infrastructure investments, the investments in automotive. You know, all the uh, opportunities and diversification are really starting to take shape. And you've got more news today. Um, an acquisition of Cellwise. So let's start there. It's exciting, um, but you know, tell everybody, it's not a household name. Tell everybody a little bit, give them the background. Who is Cellwise and why did Qualcomm make this acquisition? All right, Daniel, that's a really good starting point. So Cellwise uh, is a company that's uh, based in Israel. They have employees globally, and uh, they are in the business of providing cloud native uh, multi-vendor uh, service management and orchestration layer that sits uh, uh, above uh, at above a lot of the core network layers and so on, so that it orchestrates the entire network uh, together. Uh, they have a successful business, large number of operators with whom we work as well. And from our perspective, we're really excited about this because uh, from our standpoint, uh, it, it strengthens our overall 5G infrastructure uh, portfolio. Uh, as we have been expanding upon the topic for a long period of time, starting from our uh, RAN solutions that we announced a couple of years back and looking forward to where we see the natural trajectory of ORAN compliant networks being deployed, we feel that the orchestration layer is an important piece of the entire puzzle. And so we're really excited about the company joining us. Um, uh, we've been talking to them on so many different uh, aspects on both public and private networks, and uh, they truly complement uh, what we are offering in this space. Yeah, this is a big, big opportunity. You know, the transition to 5G is, is significant, Durga. It's not an easy transition. Players that were successful in past generations, it, it, it is not ensured that you're, they're going to be successful. And I think part of the reason Qualcomm continues to expand its investments, play a bigger role in the infrastructure space is because you, you guys truly believe that the company is capable of, of adding a lot of value, helping the service providers and, uh, you know, the operators go faster. We'll talk about that in a minute, but let's start with Qualcomm. So I kind of started the show talking a little bit about the diversification how you're expanding. This is definitely part of that story. So being a 5G leader on devices and being the, the, the capable, the, the company that provides that technology, I think everyone knows. There's no question mark there. But this space in the RAN is a space where Qualcomm is growing its presence. You've sort of alluded to it, but how does this kind of, this deal really propel the ambitions to make sure the market knows Qualcomm is aiming to lead this space? I think uh, it's important to understand like from a broader perspective as to what is it that as Qualcomm we are trying to accomplish uh, overall, right? <clears throat> and we are in the business of truly fueling the digital transformation of industries, uh, using 5G as a vehicle to do that. And, and, and as a part of that, we end up ending uh, powering what, we call, what we've been calling as the connected intelligent edge. And that, in some sense, leads to the overall growth of this new cloud economy that we are talking about. So if you start with that sort of a mission statement and take a look at uh, everything that we are doing as Qualcomm, an important piece of the puzzle as a part of 5G is there's a massive diversification of the number of kinds of devices that come into the market. And we've been doing that. It's not just about smartphones, but all kinds of new devices. So we've been doing that at the edge. But on the other side of the edge, we have the RAN, where it's equally important to have the right solutions and elements in place. So in that sense, the acquisition of Cellwise and their uh, uh, deployment and the orchestration capability really beginning, it, it begins to strengthen our overall infrastructure portfolio. Back in the day, 
we had uh, you know talked about the fact that we need a network that scales up and down nationwide citywide networks all the way down to private networks and the way to do that is the usage of ran virtualization and oran based networks now when you think about oran based networks there's a large number of moving parts in it we are doing our part before we made this acquisition we were doing our part already at the uh, at the foundational layer on the radios and in the digital un uh, distributed units but when we think of an oran compliant network there's a large number of moving parts as i mentioned and so this disaggregated network needs that orchestration layer at the top and and over the last two years as we started looking at you know not just the transition for uh, uh greenfield operators um, have uh, a unique luxury of starting from scratch and therefore you can build it uh, cloud native right from the beginning but when we started talking to a larger number of even brownfield operators to do this transition we felt that this was an important piece of the puzzle and and it is it is something that's absolutely essential in addition to that we've been talking a lot about private networks and especially in private networks we have a situation wherein our customers we are not an infrastructure vendor we work with a large number of partners but our customer happens to be system integrators those who are in the business of operating managing and running the network but these system integrator needs tools they need automation tools they need orchestration tools and so in that sense when you put together the complete picture the combination of what we as qualcom were doing till now from a ran uh, 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 you know du and ru solution space and small cell space complementing that with what we have in the orchestration layer really puts together the complete solution now i do want to say one thing in an oran world our du uh, doesn't have to only work with our ru solution it can work with anyone else's ru solution similarly our ru can work with anyone else's du solution that's how it is done the same principles will apply even for the orchestration layer but now as a complete portfolio we feel pretty confident about where we are in our infrastructure offering yeah in 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 your release you made a quote uh, about basically Qualcomm's ability to drive the development of the modern 5G network, accelerating open RAN, cloud-based cellular infrastructure, innovating 5G private network deployment. So just to lean into what you said though, and just to reiterate though, building this infrastructure will end up being a driver of all the other business units and areas of focus for Qualcomm. And I thought that was pretty interesting, you know, because obviously the stronger infrastructure means you know, the premium devices, connected PCs, you know, connected vehicles to the cloud. You know what I'm saying? So as I was trying to kind of cue you on the portfolio a little bit, it is very interesting that if you can accelerate the infrastructure, it's going to also pay dividends to the other business units that are trying to see 5G adopted more rapidly um, in the proliferation of the adoption across all the other parts of your portfolio. You said it absolutely right there, Daniel. Uh, and just to double down on that, the digital transformation of industries is 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 all about as we expand uh, our portfolio. What we are enabling really is a large number of these industries, whether it's uh, automotive, whether it's an IoT businesses. A uh, lot of these industries have never really deployed uh, cellular-based technology at scale. And these networks, as they permeate through those industries and start transforming those industries, that is where we end up not just, we enable a large number of other businesses of ours as well. So it's kind of what we see is a stepping stone towards enabling other uh, business units that we have with different kinds of devices, all the way from the sensors and, uh, 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 and uh, you know, the, the kinds of industrial deployments that we have, all kinds of new devices, AGVs and and whatnot to vehicles. But these are the different kinds of devices that eventually get enabled. But it all starts with the fact that you have to be in a position to drive that digital transformation of these industries. And so part of that happens to be, make sure we have all the pieces of the puzzle to do that from a 5G standpoint on the infrastructure side. So one more thing that I did pull out of the press note, and I, and I liked the fact that you brought partners in your ecosystem into this. I saw giant IT OEMs like HPE talking about how they see strength in this partnership, end-to-end -end automation, operation support. There's a ton of complexity. <laughs> I don't. I don't think many people realize 
when they're connecting, how much actually has to happen <laughs> and continuously happen in order to be connected. Uh, Verizon, uh, so talk about operators for a minute. The faster 5G RAN adoption isn't really just a Qualcomm thing. I mean, the operators might be the biggest beneficiaries of this because the market is still kind of like, am I, they're still waiting to see like the full benefits. I think a lot of people are still just starting to begin to see how much 5G can change, whether that's like you said, private network or just your day-to-day -day connection to devices. Talk about how important this acquisition and the continued development of Qualcomm will be in, in really helping these operators speed their deployments. We work, as you know, very closely with operators. They are uh, uh, in, in, in terms of how we can help them uh, as they start addressing new business opportunities that they see on the horizon. And what is it that we can do to help them? And for the longest period of time, I mean, we had our uh, uh, commercial focus areas, which actually enabled that both on devices side and small cell side, and nowadays increasingly on the VDU and RU side. But we also got some really good feedback, really good feedback about uh, welcoming our acquisition of Cellwise because Cellwise uh, prior to acquisition, they've had a lot of these operators as their customers, um, really good track record with that. And now we feel that it, it's even more important for us to put together the complete picture as we enable these operators for the new business models that we just talked about. Uh, in the end, everyone is looking for uh, uh, 5G that 5G expansion beyond the smartphone base. And there are new devices that are definitely coming in, but these devices also need to be empowered by the kinds of networks that feed into them. And that's the place that we can actually uh, truly offer a holistic solution to operators. At the end, it's a portfolio of solutions that we have. Operators will cherry pick what they want from each of these, but uh, that's the way that we see it. And it does change the dynamic of your relationship with some of the operators, right? Because obviously I've been to a dozen Snapdragon events and summits, and it's been commonplace for these operators to come on and talk about partnerships of the technology devices, but you're going to be now directly supplying technology at a, you know, you're scaling up the amount that they're directly working with Qualcomm. So changes your motion a little bit. It changes the relationship from ecosystem to these operators becoming vendors or, you know, you becoming a vendor to these operators in a bigger way. That is correct. Uh, some of the journey we had already begun with our uh, macro cell RAM offerings on the VDU and RU. Uh, we had already started that journey. Uh, this takes it to one level uh, above that because this orchestration layer is something that directly fits into the network. Uh, and so we really look forward to that. And uh, we've heard some really good feedback from operators coming in as well as they, you know, now we can have yeah, so many different discussions uh, with them. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, and we'll kind of wrap there, Durga, but you, you've you seen the company go from sort of a small subset of ODMs and OEMs where almost all the transactions take place despite all the design, and, and as you've built the PC business, as you're building the automotive business, and now as you're building the infrastructure business, that customer net has grown and gotten wider and wider. And again, this goes back to that broader portfolio story that Qualcomm is really working hard and diligently to build on the success and it's, you know, the provenance that it has in leading the device space and to taking it across all the opportunities that are 5G. So Durga Malati, SVP and GM leading the infrastructure business at Qualcomm. Thanks so much for joining me on the Future and Tech webcast. Congratulations on the acquisition of Cellwise. Thanks once again, Daniel. Always look forward to being here.